cruising is a whole different ballgame in 2022, and there are definitely some things that we absolutely needed to do differently. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewallcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, I was thinking back to a recent cruise that I went on, and I thought about all of the things that I absolutely did differently on this cruise. Now, some of them are actually super important, so you should know so you could plan for your own cruise. And other things I have to say, there was one good thing that actually came out of this pandemic that happened on this recent cruise that I will share with you because you probably can still take advantage of this. Well, I'll explain. Anyway, before I get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give the video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that we did differently is we did get COVID travel insurance. And honestly, I mention it because it really is so important. Now, I do get a lot of messages about where we got our travel insurance, things like that. I'm always hesitant to talk about it just because all of our circumstances are different. So whether you're in the United States, whether you're in Europe, whether you're in Canada, even in different provinces, there are different types of insurance that are offered to you, different rules, different regulations, and I just wanna make sure that you are covered. So you definitely should look into this, and at the same time, things change depending on the travel advisories, but it is something really important. I do know people who've been on cruises and who've traveled elsewhere, and if they haven't been covered with travel insurance, they have really had a hard time uh, getting back to their country on flights or even for their hotel stays if they needed those extra quarantine stays. This is really something very important and obviously something that we did make sure that we did before our last cruise. Number two, masks, masks, masks and more masks. We brought a lot of masks with us. Really, I just had several that were available a day. I really brought the surgical mask. If I was cruising right now, perhaps I would bring more N95 masks because I didn't really have a lot of them. I'm not sure I thought at the time they were as necessary as perhaps they are right now. Hard to say. So if you do uh, get your hands on those N95 masks, I definitely would probably stock up a little bit in case you might need them on your next cruise. But otherwise, get your surgical mask. They really are seemingly more effective than the cloth mask and you definitely are going to want to wear them on the cruise ship if they are required at the time that I'm filming this video, they are uh, right now. But as well, in many of the different cruise ports, you will have to wear them as well. So make sure that you do have something that still feels comfortable and still feels breathable because if you do need to wear them in the cruise port, well, that will be handy. Number three, we did cruise only excursions. I think this is the first time that I've ever done this because usually I do some research on my excursions and some of them I book privately. Sometimes I kind of do a DIY excursion. I basically research it and then I do it on my own. It's obviously much cheaper when I do it that way. And sometimes I do book the cruise line excursions. But in this case, I just wanted to make sure that I could get off in every cruise port. And I know that the rules could change uh, day by day, week by week. You just never know. I just didn't want to be disappointed. And in this case, I wanted to make my cruise planning easy. So for me, I booked the cruise line excursions. It doesn't mean that you need to, but I definitely was happy that I did. It kind of made it a worry-free cruise, which was kind of nice given the circumstances. Number four, this is something we did for the very first time. And this is something that honestly, one of two things that happened during the pandemic that were actually really good. The first thing that happened during the pandemic that was really good is I got my little dog, Abby. I just love her and well, anyway, that's an aside, but she's definitely something positive to come out of the pandemic. If you got a pandemic dog, you absolutely know what I mean. But the other thing that happened during the pandemic is I bought a hundred shares of Carnival stock. And honestly, this is something that I had wanted to do for years because I knew about the shareholder credit. And as well, obviously, I do like the idea of owning um, cruise shares. So this is something that I did early on during the pandemic, but the shares of Carnival, well, they continue and all of the cruise lines really continue to be, in my opinion, undervalued. Obviously, this is not financial advice, but we were able to buy 100 shares of Carnival stock. And when we did go on this last cruise, we were able to submit our information to the cruise line and they did give us an additional $100 onboard credit to use on our cruise, which was something really nice. 
Number five, we spent more time in our cabin than we usually do on a cruise. And in this case, I am happy that I did get a balcony cabin. And we did get the balcony cabin on purpose because we just didn't know what the cruise would be like. Would we feel that it's crowded and we wanted to spend more time on our balcony? We just really weren't sure. And I'm really happy I did. Honestly, I felt very comfortable on the cruise in terms of the crowd and in terms of people following the protocols. So that wasn't an issue. But I did really feel like having that balcony was a space that we could relax. I did sometimes have a drink on my balcony. We sometimes had breakfast on our balcony. And we did really just enjoy and relax. And we honestly needed to relax. So this was an absolute pleasure. Number six, we didn't really watch our budget as much as we usually do. I think maybe it just has to do with the fact that we haven't traveled in a couple of years. And so we did, you know, some specialty restaurants. Um, like I mentioned, we did the excursions. We did a really nice hotel after our cruise and really enjoyed it. We just really found that we really enjoyed the experience of travel. And I have to say a little bit of that came with spending a little bit, well, I don't think recklessly, in any way, but we just weren't as careful maybe with watching our budget. But we really did have an appreciation for travel. Um, this was such a pleasure. I definitely didn't take travel for granted at this point. Not that I necessarily did before, but definitely we absolutely enjoyed it and really put value on those experiences. Number seven, dealing with pre and post cruise testing. And this is something important for really everybody to know. Right now, while I'm making this video, we do all have to do testing before our cruise. And presently it's within two days before a cruise. So you do of course have to manage making those appointments or uh, maybe ordering those testing from home kits that are proctored. So there's definitely all of that. We had to do that and we are Canadian. So we did really have to kind of figure that out. At the same time, when we got off of our cruise, we did have to test after our cruise. And that was definitely something we were nervous about. How would that work? So just something to mention, especially for anybody who is traveling internationally um, and that does need it while we were on Princess, they did have uh, that post-cruise testing available right outside of the cruise terminal. It really wasn't something very difficult. Do ask about it on your cruise ship if you're not sure how that works. We did have to register on an app um, to take the test but we received the results within, I think it was within about an hour and a half or so. And it was complimentary. So at least at the time that we did cruise. And a lot of the other cruise lines are also providing testing outside of the cruise terminal. In some cases, it's not complimentary. So just make sure that you do look with your cruise line, what is provided. And in some cases, they're not providing anything at all. So you do have to find a place that is close by to the terminal or maybe even at the airport before you fly home. Now for Canadians, if you're using the Arrive Can app, this is actually not as difficult as it seems. You're just gonna upload your information um, of your passports. You're basically going to sort of almost take a photo of it. The information is gonna go in. You're gonna fill in the other information, including uh, that you are vaccinated and that you did take a test. And whether you are, I guess, positive or negative, you're gonna put that information in as well. Now, the information as to if you have to quarantine before you get home, that could change at different times. So I'm not really going to mention it in this video but it is important to just take a look um, on the government website for travel and just take a look at what the current advisories are. And then obviously that is something you have to follow. Now, something else to make sure of is when you do book your cruise, take a look at what their policies are as to if you do get COVID on the cruise ship, are they going to be helping you out with the quarantine? Or are they going to be paying for that hotel and expenses? So all the different cruise lines have slightly different policies and dates when they do expire. So make sure to look at that before you book any of your cruises, if this is relevant to you. Now, something else that I did is made sure that I stayed really super organized on this cruise. Now, I always like to be as organized as possible, but I especially made sure that I kept track of all of my information. So from my insurance provider to my excursions and more. Now, something that I will do is I will leave the information for you in case you are interested about the Ultimate Cruise Planner. And what this is, is basically it is a cruise planner that is downloadable and printable, and it can help you to keep track of your planning for your cruise vacation 
from the time you book your cruise all the way through disembarkation. So of course it has cruise packing lists, but it also has cruise uh, shore excursion planning forms. It has payment and refund tracker forms and more. If you are interested, I will leave the information linked down in the description below. Now, if you are going on a cruise and wondering about shore excursions and what to watch out for, I am going to leave a video right after this one, all about things that you definitely need to plan for and watch out for when you are in a cruise port of call. Now, I'd love to hear from you. What do you think if you've gone on a cruise in 2022 or maybe late 2021? What are the things that you think are different right now or that you will be doing differently on a cruise? Please let me know in the comments below this video. Now, I hope that this video was helpful. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.